Olof Larmström, you are a member of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry and the prize this year is for the development of lithium battery. What is special about lithium battery? This is a fantastic battery. The lithium ion battery is a fantastic battery because it actually is based on a very, very small element in our periodic table, lithium, which has such enormously attractive properties and, and you can actually, that leads to that you can get very lightweight and small volume battery with high power and high efficiency. And that's exactly uh, the benefit of this battery. So you can actually, that's actually enabled the mobile revolution. This battery actually enabled our, the revolution of the mobile world, I mean, mobile phones and laptops, what not, right? So it's a really made a very dramatic impact on our society. So I would say that this, the lithium, the basics is the lithium and how to tame that into a battery. That's really the, what is so special with this battery. Why do you have to tame it? Because lithium, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting element, it's a, a, it's a, 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 but it's very reactive. Right? It reacts, for example, quite vigorously with water. So if you put it in water, you will have you know, lots of uh, gases formed and so on. Right? So, so you need to be able to, 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 to really handle that kind of reactivity. But the reactivity is also connected to what we need. Right? We need to have the electrons right, from the lithium. And that is related to the reactivity. So, Really, this, this award is all about trying to tame that and get it into this small battery package and really use it for what it's very useful to do. So the three laureates, uh, they have tamed lithium. Did they work together? Uh, no, I don't think they worked together. They made very important discoveries, uh, individual discoveries. And together, those discoveries really, really led to the development of this phenomenal battery. How long time did it take? Oh, it took uh, quite a few years because it's really very hard to develop a good battery. It's, it's a difficult process. So it's, it, not only does it require, you know, very, uh, very, uh, how to say, important discoveries on the scientific level, but also you need to put those scientific discoveries, you have to optimize them and put them together so you can form this uh, battery. So it takes some time to do that because there are many challenges to solve on the way but they managed. If you had to think about the metaphor for this invention, what would that be? Oh, that's a, that's a very hard question. <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, that's a hard question. Maybe you can think of uh, this battery is essentially, yeah, it's kind of about the, the rechargeable world in a sense, right? So what, what this has really led to is that we now have charge, we have power anywhere we go, essentially, right? And really, um, power is very important to us, to our lives. So maybe some kind of metaphor is that it's all about charging the world and have access to energy wherever we go. Maybe something in that direction. So in what way did it influence our everyday life? Yeah, as I tried to mention, so. This battery is such a very, very good battery and also um, high-powered battery and high-energy high efficiency battery. So this is actually has found applications almost everywhere. So ever since this was introduced to the market, to, 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 the, to the public, we see this battery everywhere. We see it in mobile electronics of all sorts of mobile electronics, uh, not, nothing else than mobile phones that we all use, most of us use every day, but also laptops other small equipment like cameras and whatnot. But we also see an enormous, uh, how to say, impact on the, on the transportation sector. So this type of battery has made a large instep in the, in the, tr in the switch from fossil fuel transportation, like uh, petrol driven cars, for example, where we are now is in the, or in the middle of, of a switch to electrically driven cars. And that's an enormous impact on society. And as I also want to mention is that this type of battery has so good performance qualities. So you can actually uh, combine it with energy sources that really fluctuates over time. So you have, for example, solar energy, where you have sunshine during the day, which then can be used to power the battery. And then at night, when the sun is down, you can use the energy from the battery to power the grid. So really we can see enormous dramatic effect on society uh, because of this fantastic battery. So what about the future if we are moving towards the fossil 
uh, free fuel society. Uh, do you view lithium batteries in there or some other kind? Yes, yes. Well, I think we are actually only in the beginning of that development when it comes to to, to the real environmental effects here. And, and for example, transportation and, and, the, and, and, the, and the powering of the grid. So I think we will see many, much more of that in the future. Not only maybe from the lithium ion battery, because that's of course developed continuously in even better and better version, versions of it, but also other types of batteries that may be discovered in the future. And I think that's really the future to, to have this effect where we actually use batteries more and more for, for our powering. One of the laureates, John Goodenough, is the oldest ever Nobel Prize laureate, 97 years old. Can you tell us a little about him yeah, and his work? He is a fantastic uh, scientist. And uh, you can say that uh, um, he has been working in this field for many, many years. And he never retired. So he's still working in this field up until this age. He's still going to the lab pretty much every day, as far as I know. And he still makes him contributions to the community when it comes to the, to the uh, battery you know, science and the battery development. So he, he is a really remarkable person. He is really burning for this field and really made a very large contributions. And finally, if you had just 30 seconds to describe the prize, uh, can you tell us what makes you more, most excited about well, it? That's an, that's an easy question. <laughs> so what makes me most excited is uh, that this is a prize, this is an award, which has to, that many disciplines have to come together to make this work properly, to make the final product work properly. So here we have an award where you have a combination of, of course, chemistry, which is at the heart of these uh, uh, discoveries, and, and definitely basic science discoveries and combine that with physics and, and technology and engineering that has then led to a fantastically useful product that we all can use every day. I think that's the most exciting about this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much.